Plug and play solar is finally here, guys. Check it out. 400 watt bifacial solar panel comes right through here, through this extension cord, and straight into my house. There's no electrician needed, no high level electrical skills needed. It's literally plug and play. Let me show you the details and some testing on this. Now, before we get uh, into this, I need to issue a very important piece of information that uh, trumps all other things that you're going to see. If you order this kit, that microinverter has the anti-islanding rapid shutdown technology so that it's safe when the power goes out and isn't backfeeding and electrocuting linemen. What it does not have, and this is the important thing, is there is no way to stop this from backfeeding if your house isn't consuming all the power it's producing. So be sure and check your local areas and make sure it's okay to plug this in. There's a lot of places out there that uh, require grid tie agreements if you want to get a setup like this. Now, if you're one of the lucky people that live in the state of Utah, you're in luck because you can connect up to 1200 watts of solar power just the way I've got it uh, right here. No grid tie agreement, nothing. That's a new law that just went into effect this year, 2025. Other places it might be okay, you've just got to uh, check with uh, your local areas. And then the standard thing too, even though this is pretty darn idiot proof and, uh, and very safe, you're still dealing with high voltage DC especially, and you need to exercise caution. You could get hurt or even killed working with this. So just exercise caution with that. All right, let me show you how this works. Let's unbox this giant box and tiny box from Plug and Play Solar. Start with this small box. So we've got some great documentation here complete with images and some insights into how it works. Then we've got this cable. We've got uh, a standard 120 volt uh, plug on one end. And we've kind of got this uh, T divider. We've got a female 120 volt plug here. And then we've got uh, this adapter here that comes over and connects into the microinverter. We've got MC4 cables here to connect to your solar panel. Little mounting points here on this end. It has an operating voltage of 18 to 50 volts with maximum input power of 350 watts. Maximum working current, 12.5 amps. And it recommends that you pair a solar panel with it that puts out approximately 36 volts and 350 watts. And that does come with uh, some mounting hardware as well. And now the big guy. I do this uh, carefully. All right, I think I've got it. It did come packaged very, very well uh, for such a large item that is super hard to ship. Looks pretty darn good. Obviously this is the back. We'll check out the front here in a sec. See if it sustained any shipping damage, but uh, so far so good. Looking nice. Bifacial panel, notice that. And look at this, you guys. Arrived in perfect condition. There's a few little uh, fingerprints and whatnot uh, from packaging. Might be able to see uh, that, but that's completely normal. They just uh, wipe off because it's glass, right? Beautiful. Very impressed with Plug and Play Solar's ability to ship such an item. I'm sure this will change as time goes on, but uh, the particular panel that I got from Hyperion. I don't know if you'll be able to read that or not, but uh, this is great. 400 watts is the rated power. I'm sure that's not counting any kind of bifacial gain or anything. Our BMP is 30.01 volts. Our IMP is 12.9 amps and our VOC is 37.07 volts. So on the short circuit uh, current, the ISC, 13.79. Plug and Play Solar has done a fantastic job finding panels that uh, are right in the, the sweet spot for the microinverter that they provide with it. And if it wasn't obvious by now, this is what's classified as the Sprout Kit on Plug and Play Solar's website. Came with great instructions. And according to them, this inverter is gonna mount right here on these two holes. All right, if you guys don't have an extra set of hands, you may need to enlist the help of someone. According to the manual, you're gonna take the screw and put a washer on it there, and it goes through the hole. And then you take another flat washer, it's a little hard to see, the locking washer, and the nut, and it goes on the back side. Do as I say, not as I do. You need to install this first before you try to put the inverter in place so that you can actually get your hands back here to put these on. So now, in theory, we should be able to just slip this onto those, just like that. All right, let's just... All right, then we've got the uh, power cables coming off the solar panel at both ends, and those are going to come up here and connect into the MC4 connectors. It's impossible to plug them in the wrong direction because they only plug in one way. And we'll take the negative, plug it in there. And we'll take the positive, plug it in there. Very easy. Next step, we've got to hook up the AC cable. That's very easy. Simply plug this waterproof connector together and uh, screw this down so that it's safe and weather tight. And then notice here on the end, we've got an LED light indicator. Right now it's glowing red, a long bright red light, an island protection and fault. So. It can't, in other words, it can't detect the grid because obviously I haven't hooked it up yet. And so it is not going to be outputting any power. Steady green, that means it's functioning normal. Green flashing, the microinverter power. I assume that means it's powering up. We'll test this momentarily. It flashes once, AC voltage under voltage protection. If it's flashing two times, it's AC voltage over pressure protection. And three, frequency protection. So very nice to have a little 
LED that tells you what's going on. Got it in the uh, sun here. Let's uh, connect it to the grid and see what happens. The back side of this instruction sheet, we've got a really nice graph here showing how here in the northern hemisphere, you're going to have more sun in June, where we are right now, versus you know, January, December. The inverter is a 350 watt grid tie inverter. We should get something close to that today. It's somewhat cool. And we've got really fantastic solar conditions. As you can see, in fact, it's uh, June 21st, so today's the longest day of the year. And then here's the LED light indicators. So solid green means it's ready. Flashing green means it's generating power. Flashing yellow means low sunlight. Solid red, no AC power. Can't detect the grid. And then the, the three red flashes that are pretty self-explanatory. This is a great place to set it up on this uh, patio here because we're going to get some bifacial gain from reflection off of it on the back side of the panel, which corresponds to this tip uh, down here at the bottom of this sheet. He's also got QR codes to two additional accessories that you can purchase if you so desire, such as a smart plug to track your power production, as well as an outdoor rated extension cord. So very, very convenient. All nicely done on a single two-sided sheet of paper. All right, this is just for quick testing initially here. I'm going to actually be putting this in a more permanent setup and doing a long time test to see what kind of power it can generate. But for now, I've got it plugged into this outdoor outlet right here, going through this heavy duty 10 gauge extension cord. And just to see, I've got this uh, watt meter hooked up. Plugged in, let's go see what the LED light's doing. So if you look, the green LED started flashing almost immediately. That means that it is producing power. And check it out, it is working. 212, it's slowly ramping up. 215, 217, 218, 20. So let's give this a few minutes to fully ramp up and let's see what kind of production we're getting. All right, been a couple of minutes. Let's uh, see where our power is at at the moment. 245, fluctuating right around the 240 watt range. Not too shabby. So I'm just curious. I'm going to disconnect the solar panel from the microinverter. I'm going to hook it up to one of my portable power stations and we'll just see what that says this panel is producing. To me, it seems like a 400 watt bifacial solar panel on a surface like this on the sunniest, longest day of the year with basically perfect solar conditions in the mid 70s would be producing more than 240 ish watts. So I just want to see if there's any difference with production bypassing that microinverter. Maybe I shouldn't have as high of hopes, but uh, it seems to me like this should be producing more power on a day like today. Now, you guys uh, will probably need to get your hands on one of these MC4 disconnect tools in order to get this off the panel. I did disconnect the microinverter from the load because you do not want to disconnect solar panels under load when it's bright and sunny like it is today. Makes disconnecting these incredibly fast and easy. All right, now I'm going to connect this DC charging cable here. And I've got this uh, Delta II EcoFlow power station. Notice I've got the correct XT60i uh, connector, so we should get the full power into this unit. Plug that in. That's more like at 345 watts. All right, got everything uh, reconnected here, and uh, we are pulling 205, 206, or producing 205, 207, somewhere right in there, watts of power. It's a little less before, and that's probably because the panel has been now out in the sun for a little longer. It's also getting more towards noon, and it's heating up, and uh, the panels don't perform as well when they get hot. Let's just try one more experiment for fun. I've got this 200 watt SIGS solar panel. It's very shade tolerant. Kind of crazy expensive, but uh, anyway, uh, very efficient solar panel. As you can see, it's currently plugged into this power station. And if we take a look, we're putting in about 155, 156 watts at the moment. Now let's see if uh, it generates enough power to work with that microinverter. And we'll see what kind of power we're putting in with this different panel, just for the heck of it. All right, now I've got this uh, SIGS panel connected up to the little microinverter underneath that big panel. And uh, you can see here, the watt meter is registering 20 or 82-ish watts. Now let me show you something else awesome about this plug and play solar panel. Most microinverters, and you can see this in a number of videos that I've made experimenting with them. I'll leave uh, links to uh, the videos that I'm referring to down in the description so you can check them out. But most of them take about five minutes or so to synchronize with the grid and uh, boot up. This Sprout plug and play solar panel kit basically starts producing power immediately as soon as it sees the grid. And I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. So we've got uh, the watt meter right here. Plug this in. All right, now watch the watts. It's only been a few seconds, right? Let's see if I can get a good angle. There we go. So within a matter of seconds, there we go, we start to generate electricity. It's kind of a slow ramp as the inverter probably has a MPPT or PWM controller in it that tracks the, the max power point of the panel at any given time. But the point is, is you don't have to wait five minutes uh, for this to synchronize to the grid like the other ones take. This is almost immediate. So that's a pretty nice benefit. And then just to emphasize, you can get more kits and daisy chain them together. See how there's a plug available right here? So you could set up another panel right next to this. No extension, no additional extension cords or anything needed. And uh, the new cable uh, system that uh, comes with your next uh, inverter would simply just plug into this 
and presto, you've got double the power. I have a whole home power monitoring system. I love the thing. You know, you can see my total usage up there at the top is currently just over 500 watts, okay? So what we're going to do is we are now going to just plug this solar system in and let's watch the wattage change on this monitoring app. Just give it a few seconds and uh, within a matter of seconds, you'll see the power uh, usage, overall power usage start to drop. See, there it goes. Now we're below 500 and dropping. So it seems we've uh, kind of settled out uh, here in the 330, 340 watt range, down from just over 500. And of course, that's going to fluctuate as things, you know, cycle off and on. Something must have turned off inside my house because obviously it just dropped a, a substantial amount. But that's the cool part uh, about this, set this setup here. Even though it may not seem like a ton of power being generated, the secret sauce is it just doing slow and steady work. Every day during the time that there's some sunlight shining on the solar panel, you're reducing the amount of power you're consuming from the grid. And that's just with one. If I got a second one, all of a sudden now my standard power usage here is going to be almost zeroed. This is a great example of how this kind of setup can reduce the consumption of your house. Currently I'm producing just over 160 watts. Okay, I was talking to uh, Plug and Play Solar this afternoon as I was uh, making this video. Anyway, I was uh, making mention of uh, some of the performance metrics that uh, we were seeing here in this video. And uh, they mentioned uh, something uh, important. Heat is bad news. Solar panels are not as efficient in heat. They derate as they get hotter. Uh, but probably even more important than that is the inverter overheating. And we may actually have been getting uh, throttled performance because the inverter was getting too hot. So I just wanted to test uh, that. As you can see, the panel has completely flipped around from earlier today. So we're actually in the afternoon hours instead of the morning slash noon hours. So it's actually even hotter, but it's still not crazy hot today. Today uh, has a high of uh, the mid 70s, so not ridiculously hot. But uh, I just added some MC4 extension cables here and uh, got the uh, inverter over here. And I've even got a little fan uh, going on it, but it's in 100% shade away from the underside of that super hot solar panel. Let's see what happens when we plug it in. And we'll see if, uh, if we see any improved production. There we go. That uh, is looking substantially better and uh, much more in line with what I would expect a 400 watt solar panel to be producing after inverter losses. Earlier when we were only getting like 160 whatever watts, 180, 190, somewhere in there, that seemed really low. So this inverter will throttle itself so it doesn't self-destruct, which is good, but uh, you're leaving power on the table. Been holding strong at uh, around the 220-ish watt uh, range. What I'm gonna do now is take away this fan and let it run for a minute and see if, you know, just natural convective breeze and uh, whatnot will be sufficient to keep it cool. All right, it's been a few minutes here and uh, this is still in the shade, uh, but no fan and I've let it uh, heat back up. It is toasty to the touch, not burn you hot, but now oh, check that out. We're down to the 160 mark again. All right, now just for fun, I'm gonna bring the fan back out, blow it on there, and now it's heated up and see if even under load, I can bring that power back up a little bit. So I just put the fan on it and uh, check it out almost immediately we're increasing our output. So this, uh, this little microinverter does have issues with heat and it will throttle itself if it gets too hot. Just genuine real world tests here, just to inform all of you on exactly what to expect. All right, been a few more minutes here with this fan running on the inverter, just slightly warm to the touch. Oh yeah, and see we're well into the 200 watt range now. So that's the secret sauce, uh, keeping that inverter cool uh, will maximize your power output. All right, everyone, that uh, is a quick uh, rundown on this. Leave comments down below on your thoughts. Super easy to expand, which I really like. And I mean, you can't beat the setup. This is pretty darn sweet. So leave comments down below on what you guys think. I'm gonna leave links to these kits. There are two different sizes you can pick from. This is the largest one available at this point, uh, the Sprout. And I believe the other one's called the Seed and it's slightly smaller. Personally, if you're gonna spend the money on this app, I just go for the Sprout and get as much bang for your buck as you possibly can. There's also an option to just get the microinverter and the cables associated with that. That could be substantially uh, cheaper depending on where you live and your situation if you've got a good source for solar panels near you. Solar panels are incredibly heavy and hard to ship and therefore cost a lot to ship. So you could save a substantial amount of money sourcing a solar panel near you and then just shipping the small microinverter and cables. That might not work for everyone, so obviously you can get the whole kit shipped to your door as well. Stay tuned because uh, I've got another test coming up that uh, happens to have something to do with air conditioning <laughs> and this uh, solar setup, so you won't want to miss that. Subscribe. I've also linked uh, some additional videos to different solar setups that I've done over the years for you to check out. The other reason you want to be subscribed is because I'm going to be doing a long-term test on this. We're going to see what kind of impact it has on the power bill. So I'm pretty stoked about that. So subscribe so you don't miss that in the coming months. I look forward to interacting with you guys down in the comments, and we'll catch you all next time.